What an incredible weekend of football. The drama, the storylines, it was, it was absolutely great. There were also, unfortunately, a ton of injuries that we'll have to discuss on today's episode. We're going to get through the studs, the duds, those final straw players, and what do you do? Who can you trade? Who do you have to just cut and leave a landmine to your friends? Make sure you like this video. Subscribe to the channel so you have all the alerts right in your pocket. You smash that bell. That's what they say. You got to smash it and enjoy the show. Fall is a time for excitement, so go ahead and switch things up with a new recipe from Hello Fresh with pre-measured ingredients and easy to follow directions. It's never been easier to try something new. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And we want to thank Ritual. We all deserve to know what we're putting in our bodies and why, especially when it comes to something we take every day. And Ritual's clean, vegan-friendly multivitamin is formulated with high-quality nutrients in bioavailable forms your body can actually use. You know what you won't find? Sugars. GMOs, major allergens, synthetic fillers, all that nonsense. And my favorite part personally, you're not going to get the egg burps. The no, fish you burps. do not. They are, they are minty. They are yeah. refreshing. They go down easy. and It's, they, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a delightful it's experience. Nice. It's the multivitamin reimagined. It, they make sure everything is traceable. You can see the supply chain, and they make it for whatever stage of life you are in, men, women, teens wherever you are they have it for you get key nutrients without the bs ritual is offering our listeners 10 percent off during your first three months visit ritual.com slash footballers to start your ritual today welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast. That's the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. I'm your host for today, Mike, the Fantasy Hitman Right, joined by Jason, the nasty man, Moore. Oh, McNasty is here, and we're 12 days away from uh, National Best Friends Day. Oh, I cannot wait. Jason, did you see there was a uh, parody account of you that was created of Jason the the McNasty man I did not mm. there's so many parody accounts of me I well you're I just, so important right exactly that's when you know you're a super celebrity <laughs> is when uh you just I mean you need that check mark so you know it's me it is Monday yesterday was an incredible incredible football Sunday it was wild. The 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 morning games, as us best coasters uh, refer to them. Yeah. The, the early. Wait, there's another way. Yeah. Uh, the early games. I mean, there was so much drama in those games. I. Yes. It was outstanding football, and then in the afternoon games or the later games for you know the uh, the the least coasters. The, the midnight games. Um. Oh my goodness, were they brutal? Yes. Just injuries everywhere that was not um not quite as fun but it was a great weekend of football on today's show we're gonna look back at what happened get through the stud muffins the duds you know just some uh, reflection some advice moving forward if you want to watch the show we are on youtube that is youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers make sure you subscribe and you click the bell the socials on twitter at the ff ballers i am at ff hitman jason the nasty man at Jason FFL and Andy is at Andy Holloway. We are joined today by the cardboard bear extraordinaire who is look at that smug face. That smug stupid face. Mm -hmm. He's very excited about the the uh the victory yesterday. Yeah. Taking the down bears, the Raiders. Bears win and he sits there all high and mighty. Goodness gracious. Get over yourself, Jay. <laughs> Jay Jay Gris uh, over there holding it down as the third seat. Jason, it is Monday. Hmm. Um, you just get <laughs> sophisticated. Yes. How about a nice Chase sleigh pool? And a uh, Mantonio Brown. Mantonio Gibson. <laughs> oh, sad one for us. Kryler Murray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or Starvin Jones or Jr. <laughs> Hasta la vista, Chenault. That's so bad. <laughs> That's so bad. Smile Pits. Oh, not to be outdone by Smiles Gaskin. Hmm. How about Mild Sanders? 
Yes, yes, I prefer the hot version. Jamarvelous Chase! Oh, Jamarvelous Chase indeed. Set it and fornet it. How about Alan Sobinson? Oh, Sam darn it all! <laughs> oh, oh, very topical. Kadarius Kaoni. Pow, 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 pow. Why do we punch people in helmets? I do not know. Because we're stupid. <laughs> Um, my personal favorite, and the saddest, Missin Crosby. <laughs> oh, and Dawson Fort Knox. We really do need to figure this Dawson Knox thing out. I think it's, I think it's figured out. You go with Fort Knox? Oh, you're saying nickname. I was like, he's good. Oh, no, that, that's, <laughs> just play him. that's done. Lock him into the lineups. What I'm, there's just the opportunities here for someone with the last name Knox. It's, it's endless. Yeah, I mean, there's... There's plenty of uh, Knox Knox jokes you could make. Ooh, who's so, there? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Every time he catches the ball, who's there? Knox Knox. Oh, oh, we are stupid. Oh, yes, we are. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. Some cleanup from last week, if you did not catch it. George Kittle of the 49ers, he is on the injured reserve. He will miss at least two more weeks with that calf injury, and Calvin Ridley was not there for the London game for personal issues. We don't know the details. Wish him the best, and hopefully he'll be back on the field. For this week, we got the update on Russell Wilson, quarterback from the Seattle Seahawks. He says he's targeting a Week 10 return. Uh, not a doctor, uh, but I think that is... Uh, optimistic the yeah the, what i have heard about the injury which because it was a tendon tear in the middle finger the tendon that lets you open the finger uh that is a essentially a three to four week recovery just for uh the finger where they had to uh, stitch the tendon back onto the muscle which is all that i don't know how what kind of seamstress is, is making that happen is super glue or what <laughs> what, what but, are we doing in there but then on top of the healing a lot of other things have to go right. I mean, you need some recovery time. So he says week 10. We will see. I think the main thing is he's out for a while. Yes. Yeah. So that is that will be an adjustment for the entire Seahawks team. Gino looked okay when he came in, but let's see how Gino looked through four quarters. If you don't have an IR and you're in a single quarterback league, I know he's Russell Wilson, but I, oh, would, I would drop him. I would drop him yeah. as well. From the Giants, holy crap, this was a bloodbath unfortunately, for the New York team. Saquon Barkley, on a freak roll of his ankle, suffered a low ankle sprain. Ian Rappaport is saying he could miss two to four weeks. This thing swolled up like a balloon immediately. It looked he, bad. He's like a Final Destination type of yeah. – Like, it just – it always finds him. He did not. It wasn't his fault. It wasn't an in, a quote unquote injury prone. He's just running, yeah. and some other guy runs and steps under him, and he rolls it up. It was it was not good. So he will, uh, yeah, he'll he'll be gone for he's, a couple of. He's weeks. He's gonna be out a while. Daniel Jones on a keeper trying to score a touchdown suffered a concussion. It was, it. It was one of those like real scary ones mm -hmm. where he gets up and he's wobbly. You got the so, uh, the the newborn baby deer legs. Yes. Yeah, so we wish him a speedy recovery. But that was a big concussion. I, now concussions are all over the place. Where sometimes, <clears throat> excuse me, sometimes guys are back, sometimes they're not. Yeah. The medical analysts always tell people don't don't concern yourself with what it looks like. I've seen right. really bad hits that just seem like oh my gosh that's gonna be. And then they clear the concussion mm -hmm. protocol right away, and 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 the the reverse as well. Someone just yeah, it feels know, like they just tapped their head on the ground. It, exactly. it didn't look like a big hit. Yeah, and brain injuries out half the season. Yeah, you are crazy. Uh, and Kenny Galladay, who <sighs> Kenny Gooseday, he was doing nothing, and then he exited with a knee injury. It was a hyperextended knee. So we will see what happens. He is not a lock to play couple of hyperextended knees. You had Kenny Galladay. You had Justin Fields with the same type of thing. If Fields you was able to get back on the field, though. Yes. If you remember uh, last year, that was what kept uh, George Kittle out for a couple of games. It's just a matter of whether or not there's a bone bruise in the hyperextension. Then they'll, the, the pain will make them miss some time. Kadarius Toney from the Giants, who was having his... This was a true breakout game. He was on his way to a 200-yard day. 
Uh, he did. He ended up getting a precautionary x-ray on his leg where he got kind of shaken up. He also got ejected for throwing a punch at some guy wearing a, uh, a, a piece of equipment that I would put on if someone was going to punch me in the head. Did he knock him out? No. Oh, really? It didn't work. It did, he didn't get through. Has hmm. it ever worked? No, of course not. It, I think it's broken hands before. Like, I I totally understand. You're playing a game of football where you're just you're on top of each other in the entire game getting frustrated and then things boil over. I understand that. But how do you not go with like a a slap to the ear hole or something? Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I wonder if you got both of yeah, the ear holes. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would if you're that would be effective. But, but uh, there, punching someone's not going to work. There are definitely more effective. I mean, I don't want to teach players <laughs> violence, but a throat chop under the helmet well, is really the way to go. Speaking Just, of that, Jason, yeah. Joe Burrow was taken to the hospital, oh. quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. After he had already left the field, on a, he scrambled, took a devastating hit where everyone was holding their breath going, oh, please not again. Including him. He got back in, but now he's being evaluated for a possible throat contusion. We need more injury or uh, injury updates on that. Najee Harris was having a monster game, and then he left with cramps. I believe it was in his calf. Uh, let's see. We got <clears throat> Tyreek Hill suffered an unspecified knee injury in Sunday's, uh, Sunday night's game. We'll see. Jo uh, Travis Kelsey had a stinger at the end, which – that sucked where it was like th this game is out of hand and then Travis Kelsey takes a big shot to the head. The the huge news from that Chiefs game though. Clyde Edwards Alaire bent over backwards, leg trapped underneath him. It's a knee injury officially. We don't know the extent of it. We know he was down. The hope. uh doing the uh the yeah. bang on the ground where it feels like a player knows what happened. If if being if how you exit the field is indicative of the injury, then it's really, really bad because I've never seen someone carried off quite like how he was carried off, just hoisted up and someone holding him under his leg. And uh, But I, I do think that the hope here is an MCL injury. Uh, the way it twisted, uh, it wasn't direct contact or one of those non-contact. It was, it was a twist, so you're hoping he's going to be out for a couple of weeks with an MCL. Prior to going out, it's worth noting because obviously – Sure. You know, he was he was uh, in the second half as soon as the game, uh, the second half started, which was um, after a 10 year break um, in action. He was on the drive and he wasn't he, he wasn't rotating every single play the way that he was the first half. But he is, you know, week one, he was like a 90 plus percent snap guy. And every week it's gone down. And then Jarek McKinnon. Daryl Williams and Clyde Edwards Alaire were in a three man rotation before the injury. So when he comes back, he's not coming back to immediate bell cow uh, yeah. gameplay at all. Tom Brady dealing with a thumb injury. He should be good to go. Just uh, shove that thing in some soil, and I'm sure he'll heal up right away. Damian Harris, running back for the uh, New England Patriots, he was having himself a game. He had a rib injury. He tried to fight his way through it, but. He ended up getting knocked out. Juju Smith-Schuster mm. of the Steelers, he exited with a shoulder injury, and this one, we're told, is worrisome, where he's expected to go on the IR, and they are concerned that this will be a rest-of-season injury. That sucks a lot for Juju on the contract. He was on a one-year deal, right? Yeah. Where yeah. he's trying to earn his big payday. Where the, Betting the, on himself, as with, they say. Where the salary cap goes up. So hopefully he's okay, and that will that changes the entire dynamic of the Steelers. Maybe like where Juju wasn't prolific this year, but he is still important to the way that Big Ben plays football these days. So we will see how that changes. Curtis Samuel, ah! he, groin. he tried again, and his this groin injury. If you have not. It's, it will not go away. Yeah, if you have not cut Curtis Samuel yet, join me and say goodbye. It's uh, th This has been uh, half a year groin issue. I would expect that he's going to need some kind of core muscle surgery soon because this won't heal. He didn't practice Wednesday and Thursday. I was worried I cut him before the week. Then he goes out there and, and disappears. In, in a maneuver I don't know that I've seen in all of my years watching football, Jacoby Brissett, the Miami Dolphins quarterback, which 
Look, I mean, I know that the, the, the score of the Dolphins, Tampa Bay, it ended in a blowout. Mm -hmm. This game was close for, for quite a while. But anyways, Brissett is carted away with yeah. a hamstring injury. Not good. But then he was carted back. But he didn't come back. No, no. He, he, was, was, he, he rode the car to get back onto the field like a, uh, this is a, 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 not Ricky Bobby, who am I, water boy oh, yeah. uh, situation <laughs> where they got to drive him up. And I don't know. We'll we'll see what's going on there with Jacoby Beef Brisket. What, what it said to me is that him on one leg was better than whatever option was behind him. Do we have so, that drop anywhere? Oh, Here we go. We've got hey, where's the knee? He's coming back. He's on the cart. Uh, the Cardinals said in Max Williams, who was having what looked like a breakout season, he exited with a knee injury. From the look of it, it was a strong shot to a planted knee and it the the knee did the sideways movement cardinals again not a doctor but that looks like a season ending knee yeah injury. they fear it's season ending and i i think that's the expectation so uh, rumors that they might be looking to trade for a tight end uh we will see if they do if they trade for a tight end i think it's so be interesting yeah you've got to pay attention it to could it. be interesting in the lions wide receiver quintus cephas he exited after suffering a shoulder or a clavicle injury like i said there was a lot of uh injury situations that unfortunately like, they didn't overshadow but i know we're a fantasy football show but those games you know like the uh the, the green bay cincinnati game if you did not get to enjoy the end of that game of just how many missed kicks were there? I think it was four, uh, I th yeah, four or five. five I thought and kicks that were were, were game winning kicks, and no one wanted to win this game. Fortunately for Mason Crosby, he made the last one. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise he goes home a winner. He was a new resident of Cincinnati because I can't imagine. <laughs> You can't, you can't. You can't get back on the team plane. You can't travel with the plane after that many misses. <laughs> that that's yeah, not welcome. Uh, so that was today's news and notes presented by Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. Download the Sleeper app right now. Join the Breaking Alerts channel. It's faster than every other source. Let's get into some actual good stuff. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Big herbs! Big herbs. Holy crap. Justin Herbert. 26 of 43 for almost 400 yards and four through the air. He, first ballot? He added a – what, a first ballot is Hall he, of Fame? Is, is We're already doing this. first ballot yet? He added a rushing touchdown. The He has 10 games of 300-plus passing yards. That's already a record for the first two, two years in the NFL. Herbert, unbelievable. Like, the, the player from Oregon – and him transforming into this Justin Herbert, I don't think even the Chargers believed that that was going to happen. Where he was in this dink dunk offense, you know, he had the physical school, the physical tools, but Justin Herbert is emerging into an elite player. And the play calling of oh, the yeah. Chargers, yes, yes, you we we have our champion. We do. We have our analytics champion. They're going through for it on fourth down all the time. Oh, it's fourth and seven. So what? It. If you get four plays to get a first down, you have a better chance of getting it than if you only have three plays. And apparently, one of the head coaches in the NFL has finally figured that out. Yeah, so a massive hat tip to Brandon Staley. And like some of these fourth down calls, even I was blushing going, oh, whoa, Mr. Staley, are you sure you want to be doing this? But if you looked at how the game was going, short, let he fa let's say he fails to convert on one of these fourth downs, and then the Browns is in a, in a very positive situation, and then the Browns win. If he didn't keep going for it on fourth down, the Chargers were not going to win the game regardless of the outcome of the call on fourth down. And yet the the intestinal fortitude here, the analytic calls of Staley, turn into a big comeback win for the Chargers. The Chargers came back from behind to win the game, and – Against all odds, they did it, and then they missed the extra point yes. to no longer tie the game. And then still, we're like, well, got to have more Justin. Got the ball back, and he did it again. Can you imagine 
how good the Dolphins would have been if they <laughs> if they drafted <laughs> Justin Herbert instead of oh, Tua. Oh, don't say those things. Sorry. Uh, City cannot handle that at this moment. Josh Stallion, the excellent one, had another monster day against the Kansas City Chiefs. The Buffalo Bills. <laughs> I feel good about my preseason Holy Super crap. Bowl champion Buffalo Bills take. And they get the Tennessee Titans and then a bye week and then Miami. They're going to keep cruising along. Josh Allen is absolutely crushing. Tom Brady, the plant man, threw another five, <laughs> threw another five touchdowns and 400 yards. At, at home. home. At home. I think it's five games in a row with four or more passing touchdowns for Tom Brady. And the nice thing is we talked about, like, there's going to be a rotation with these wide receivers, and every week one of them is going to be bad, and you just don't know who it's going to be. With with Gronk missing, it's like they're all three fine. Gr sure. Chris Godwin had himself a very nice game, and he was easily the worst. And then you had two touchdowns for Evans, two touchdowns for Antonio. Antonio. Jameis. Antonio. Yes, thank you. Jameis Winston, <laughs> he did it again. Hope you have him in best ball. 15, 15 completions, four touchdowns. Who are the New Orleans Saints? I don't know. I don't think that they know they have no who idea. they are. No one, no one could possibly know who the Saints are. Do they have a good defense, Mike? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> well, how about their offense? Is it really good? I Maybe. I don't, I don't have know. a clue. Who, who knows? This is the best, worst team I've ever seen. Davis Mills of the Houston Texans. Oh, 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 man. I Look, Sunday Live, I do my best to uh, project how I think Sunday is going to go. I, I, I may have talked a lot of crap about the Houston Texans and Davis Mills, and he made me look like a fool as they should have beat the Patriots. Now, I'm guessing that the coaching of Bill Belichick is what turned things around. But Davis Mills had himself a game, 21 for 29, over 300 yards and three passing touchdowns. He is one of four rookie quarterbacks to throw for 202 in a game against Belichick since the year 2000. So kudos I, to you, Davis Mills. What a game. That was mind-blowing. And this, this will be the last time we celebrate Davis Mills. <laughs> but great job. Probably. Dak had another great game, 303. He gets the Patriots next week. Jalen Hurts. Oh, my God. Goodness, Jalen Hurts. From the depths, I don't know how we ended up here. This is this is what we we I mean we we say this every single week all the time. Mobile rushing quarterbacks. Yep. They're they're a cheat code because here's the truth. Jalen Hurts sucked. He played terrible. He played a bad game. And it w you some mean of win it week winning quarterback Jalen Hurts. Oh, oh yes, I mean the quarterback five on the season, Jalen Hurts, who's and they beat the Panthers, who had a great yes won the game. Helped you in fantasy, had a great fantasy line. This is a sell. We're talking stud muffins right now. Yes. And I have Jalen Hurts everywhere. And I'm watching this game just grossed out. The Panthers just shutting them down. The play calling of the Eagles. I, I can't even I can't even <laughs> verbalize how <laughs> barf it was. And then somehow at the end of the game, I think he had like five fantasy points like halfway through the fourth quarter. And then he uh, has two rushing touchdowns. Um, 30 rushing yards and has himself a good game. Trevor Lawrence had himself a fine game, 270 plus with a touchdown, and he also ran one in. The game plan of the Jaguars, I, I get it. Like they they played well, but Marvin uh, Marvin Jones Jr. Lavisca Chenault, I'm, they're probably in the in the in the poopy pants section. Well, they were in the Monday Punday section at least because. I, I don't know how you're not getting these guys involved, but Trevor Lawrence, he still had himself a fine game. Yeah, it was uh, – and it could have been better. He had a touchdown call back, which – same with Jalen Hurts. Yes. That's, Jalen Hurts. Are we at five on the season now? Five on the season that have that he has scored and called back by, by silly, stupid penalties, like, uh, you know, illegal formations and um, offensive – you know, the, the pick plays Greg, that are – Greg Ward not knowing how to run a pick play. Yeah, so that's that's upsetting. Um, well, before we get to the running back studs, I want to thank today's sponsors, and I want to thank Helix Sleep because I absolutely love my mattress from Helix Sleep. My mattress is from Helix Sleep. I don't, you know, as soon as I got one, I'm like, oh, 
I need to replace my children's. I need to replace my guest uh, bedroom. You take a quiz through Helix Sleep. It takes just two minutes, and it matches your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. And it is legit. It's not one of those uh, surveys you take, and then at the end it's just have our mattress. <laughs> Everyone gets the same thing. They have, you know, Do you like a soft, medium, firm? Are you a side sleeper, a back sleeper? Are you like me? Are you on Team Hefty Boys? They have something specific for you know us plus size sleepers um and and they they really are good go to helixsleep.com slash footballers take the two minute sleep quiz and they will match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life they have a 10 year warranty uh and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free and helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers. That's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to $200 off and two free pillows. Foot Clan want to thank today's sponsor, Nuts.com. It is the best kept secret of savvy snackers across the country. Nuts.com is not just for people. It's not just for, your, your, uh, for the nut lovers out there. It's a one-stop online pantry shop. We are massive fans, mm -hmm. massive fans of the snacks. They keep our snack count at 100 at nuts.com. White chocolate, toffee cashews, bourbon pecan. My personal favorite, the bourbon pecans. You get a bag in front of me, stand back. Man, if you it had those cashews fight those pecans, I, that's, a, that's a brutal battle because those cashews are unbeatable. They have over 4,000 products to choose from. They have delicious, healthy kid family snacks like dry, uh, dried strawberries, custom trail mix, plus all the raw, organic, roasted, salted, and candied nuts you can imagine, even chocolate dips. It's a family-run business that takes pride in getting you the freshest, the freshest foods and freshest snacks. They have gluten-free and vegan options, and delivery is fast. Most orders ship the same day. We were shocked at like they say they ship fast this is no joke it was like magic yeah i felt like we ordered it and it just showed up yeah so it, it's fast it's delicious nuts.com and new nuts.com customers get free shipping on your first order when you text tff to 64000 text tff to 64000 to get free shipping on your first order from nuts.com that's tff to 64000 terms apply available at nuts.com slash terms. At the running back position. How'd Derrick Henry do this week? <laughs> oh, man. Derrick Henry, 29 attempts. That's unbelievable. 130 rushing yards, three rushing touchdowns. Three rushing touchdowns. Now he gets Buffalo next week. So what? Who cares? I, I tend to agree. It's Derrick Henry, but... I mean, week one... Buffalo looks great. Against Arizona... Derrick Henry was the running back 29. He was 17 for 58. Um, had a terrible game. And obviously those will come throughout the course of the season. You're not doing anything other than rejoicing for all the great games, though. Austin Eckler of the Chargers. He had himself a day, 17 carries, 66 uh, rushing yards, two touchdowns, five targets that turned into five for 31 and one including at the end of the game, a touchdown that he didn't even want to score <laughs> himself. I love it. Uh, strategically, they were just trying to run out the clock, and Cleveland knew, recognized that they had to do something about it. So, so Eckler takes a handoff inside the five. Could have They were going to let him in. Did I say I said five for 31? Five for 53. Sorry. D Austin Eckler had a great game through the air. Uh, but Eckler takes the handoff. And the the Browns picked him up and brought him into the end zone because that was their only play. They had to get the ball back for a chance to win. Very funny play, uh, but Eckler ends up with a monster day. Miles Gaskin, the gas man, 5 for 25 on the ground. Okay, is Tampa Bay. No big deal. 10 targets, 10 for 74, two touchdowns through the air, 69% of the snaps, nice. way up from where he was. Are we back in on the gas, man? He gets Jacksonville in Atlanta. Devontae Parker was out for the Dolphins. The targets shifted to the running back position. Um, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I'm, I'm not back in on Miles Gaskin. I, I think this is an opportunity. Um, if, if you've been 
experiencing the Dolphins and the Miles Gaskin uh, ride, it has not been fun. I can almost guarantee you that you didn't get any of these points, right? Like, this, sure. If yeah. if Miles Gaskin was in your lineup, I'm sorry for how your lineup is currently going because there's just no way after being the running back. I mean. He hasn't been a, a running back two yet this year. He hasn't been in the top 24, um, and we were through four weeks of the season. So he was probably on your bench. Now he went outlandish, had an awesome game, looked great, got the targets, um, and this is where he's going to score is through the air. So it's nice because if you knew he was going to be heavily targeted week in and week out, he's a great flex play. Um the touchdowns are probably not going to come a lot. And he had two of them this game. So this is a guy I would be looking to trade high off of the performance. Super Camario just keeps doing his thing. 16 for 71 and a rushing score. Eight targets. Five for 51 and one. I mean, he's he seems unstoppable at this point. Well, he'll be stopped this week because do you know oh. what this week brings, Mike? Yeah, I do. Bye weeks. Yep. Zeke. 21 for 110 and a rushing touchdown and a uh, receiving touchdown as well. We had an extremely scary moment where it was another fluke thing where Zeke, the, the, he's going for the pylon. The pylon is knocked over and Zeke falls on it like the middle of his back, you know, almost like you, he got, uh, uh, where his legs are trying to touch his head, that type mm -hmm, of, a, of mm -hmm. a, a bending, and he was down, like he writhing was, in pain. He was a man down. Where he, just the way that the afternoon games were trending, it was yeah. Well, of course, of course, Zeke is going to get hurt in this game after we already lost Saquon. And Barkley. then the next play, Amari Cooper comes up hobbled and limping, and you're like, goodness gracious! Yes. But I'm telling you, Zeke was down for several minutes. And then he got up and he scored a touchdown. Yeah, it was like one play later. It was like he took a playoff, and same with Cooper. And then next <laughs> thing you know, they're both on the field and 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 they're fine. Zeke has been great. Yes, he's the the running back three over the last three weeks after that week one game that we knew was going to be hard against Tampa Bay. He is one of only two running backs who have been inside the top ten each of the last four weeks. The other one being Austin Eckler. Derrick Henry was running back eleven once. Yeah, what a loser. Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, both boys from the Cleveland Browns, got it done with huge games. They were the main reason why the Chargers had to keep going for it on fourth down because their defense could not find an answer. Alexander Madison. <laughs> he was great. I get it. It's versus Detroit, but still, give the man his due. 25 carries, 113 yards, yards, seven targets, seven for 40, and a receiving touchdown. He I has filled in for Dalvin Cook twice this year, and he has put up massive RB1 numbers both times. Why Why does it seem like they pass the ball more to Alexander Madison I don't than they know. do to Dalvin Cook? I don't like, know. Get Dalvin Cook involved the exact same way. I think what it is is they just believe in the running game more with Dalvin Cook. So Perhaps. You know, the, he they run more, but it's like your offense would be better. If you use Dalvin Cook the way you're using Alexander Madison, uh, someone someone let him know. Yeah, and he, so he's been an in great in, a great insurance running back. James Robinson, he's very good at football. It seems Urban Meyer has finally recognized this. Gave him 18 carries. He ends up with 149 and one. Should have been two. Urban Meyer didn't doesn't fully recognize this though because we were seeing Carlos Hyde fourth, taking goal line snaps. Fourth and one. You got one shot. You're going to go for it from the goal line. One shot. And they did throw away their shot because they, <laughs> they could have given it to the guy who can't be tackled. Instead, they gave it to Carlos Hyde, and he lost five yards. Najee Harris, it wasn't just 19 targets this week for the Pittsburgh Steelers against the Denver Broncos. 23 carries, 122, and a rushing score. He also saw five targets. How are you feeling about Najee now, Jason? Uh, outstanding. I mean, you know, it was scary at the end of that game. It looked like he pulled a hamstring or, yeah. uh, or you know, or, or worse. Thankfully, it was just cramps. But Najee, after that week one performance, just like Zeke, Zeke and Najee's seasons are crazy similar. Week one, they were both around the running back 40, irrelevant, useless. And then from that point on, they have not been outside of the top 12 at running back. They're dominating. Um, they're usage is what you want so um, I feel great about Najee and with Juju being 
gone. That is official now. We we did get, he had the oh, surgery. Did we hear? Okay. He is done for the season. Juju yeah. is gone. Um, those little dink and dunk targets, um, Deontay and Najee just somehow it seems impossible that they could get more targets. You're like, well, no, someone else will come in. You know, maybe James Washington will be involved. And yes, someone else will come in, and then Deontay and Najee will get even more targets. Can we get uh, Najee some bananas? Yeah. Like, and just just have, you know, get, get this man some potassium. And can we get, have the IV at the ready? Can we put Big Ben in, like, a suit of armor? Because <laughs> I just I, – <laughs> everything changes for the worst if – like, I know he's, he's bad. He's, he's not going to be any slower. He's Exactly. I mean, that's, you're, there's no problem. You just want him to be there to check the ball down to Najee. DeAndre Swift, uh, he kind of got it done in garbage time, but garbage time counts for fantasy football. Devontae Booker, he was an honorable mention when he took over for Saquon Barkley. He had two touchdowns on the week. Be a huge waiver wire pickup. Yes, he went. Leonard Fournette, it was the Miami Dolphins, so of course there's going to be a rushing touchdown. He got it done. At the wide receiver position, holy freaking crap, Mike Williams. 16 targets. He has been, in the last month, the wide receiver 9, the wide receiver 1, a bomb of a week where he was the wide receiver 106 where Keenan Allen was also bad and then the wide receiver won how are okay I brought it up you know a couple weeks ago Jason that I was getting the this feels like the Chris Godwin Mike Evans season where it's it's funny to make jokes that Mike Williams is the number one guy on the team it's funny until it's not and where are you at this current moment in time yeah, I mean, Keenan Allen has been... Uh, Keenan's little, been fine. He's been fine, but he's been disappointing. Um, obviously, he's he's good. You look back at Keenan's last few games, nine targets, 11 targets, 12 targets, great. Um, he hasn't been doing that much with them, uh, despite some, some of these targets are, you know, um, coming in the red zone, but I think you got to make the shift. I was hesitant. Uh, maybe I waited a week too long. But so long as Mike Williams is healthy and with the absolute belief we have in the coaching staff there right now mm -hmm. um, and the belief we have in Herbert, Mike Williams has to be seen as, uh, you know, a top five wide receiver right now. There's, I mean, right now uh, on the course of the season, he's the number one wide receiver um, for fantasy. So, yeah, saying top five is – that's uh, – that's low, lower yeah. than where he Mike is. Mike Williams, best draft pick of 2021. I think we can, yeah. well, I think we can already call that. Your the, footy is in the yeah. mail. Uh, Devontae Adams, 11 for 206 and 1. We mentioned it with the boys in Tampa Bay. Antonio Brown, 7 for 124 and 2. Mike Evans, he wasn't doing much, but then he got in the action in the fourth quarter, 6 for 113 and 2. Jamar Chase, oh. Jamarvelous. Body. He keeps getting it done, and this time we saw 10 targets, 6 for 159 and 1. Currently the wide receiver 6 on the season. Jason, if you could have drafted Jamar Chase in the fifth round, should you have done that? No, you should have drafted him in the fourth <laughs> round. You should have You should have never let him get to the fifth. Are you kidding me? Um, he's he looked, been great. I, I love on his first long, deep touchdown reception, uh, Andrew Siciliano said it properly when he said all he does is catch long touchdowns uh, and he does every yeah. single week he's catching a long touchdown yeah uh Kadarius Tony he's <sighs> money 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 here we had 13 targets 10 for 189 he is just so shifty he was a big dummy got himself kicked out of the game otherwise he definitely would have hit 200 yards the way that the game was going now what is interesting is, for this team is Sterling, the, the number one, number two, and now the number three wide receiver, I guess, because Kenny Galladay is in that bunch oh, and now. Maybe even number four. I mean, Kadarius Tony was running behind Darius Slayton. That's so, what I say. Like, Sterling Shepard and Slayton were out. When they come back, I, what happens? I mean, you obviously, you can't move away from Tony now at this point through two weeks, your first round draft pick. Dave, it's me, Dave. Uh, Dave making us look like fools because Kadarius Tony looks fantastic. You have to keep him involved in the offense. But once Shepard is back, 
are we going to see 13 targets a week for Tony? No, no, you're certainly – you're not going to see 13 targets for Kadarius Tony. What happened in this game was they lost literally everyone. Um, it was Kadarius Tony and Kadarius Tony. If they could have had him throw the ball to him, they would have. In fact, when they got down in the red zone at the end, they had to wildcat Kadarius. They're like, I don't trust yeah. Glennon to throw it to Kadarius Tony. We're just going <laughs> to snap it right to Kadarius Tony. And I love it. I love that the that the you know uh, that the, the staff saw. I can't believe Jason Garrett had it in him. Yeah, that Jason Garrett was like, we've got to have him touch the ball. He's the only guy on the field that can do anything at this point. Um, but when Sterling Shepard comes back, when Kenny Galladay comes back, they will not go away from Kadarius Tony. But he won't be a thirteen target first read type of guy in the offense. But the what the Foot Clan needs to know is that this dude is an electric weapon who has proven he can outrun NFL mm -hmm. you know, guys. You, you see it with uh, Rondell Moore and Kadarius Tony. And, sure, and, and Tyreek. Obvious, obviously Tyreek. Uh, DK Metcalf, 5 for 98 and 2. It was a fantastic game where you got to be holding out hope that Geno Smith can get something done for Seattle. Marquez Callaway came through with a big game. That's great. One of them was a, a Hail Mary at the half that – like that's just it that counts. Is so embarrassing for the defense that that can ever happen. Chase Claypool, six targets, five for 130 and a score. Juju, you mentioned it, Jason. He had the surgery. He's out for the season. What is your rest of season gut reaction to this with Chase Claypool moving forward? Yeah, I, I think Chase Claypool is going to be a really good option the rest of the way. The last two games he's been out there, he was uh, a top 24 wide receiver, 96 yards, um, and then 130 yards. He's a deep guy. Um, he's going to be more necessary in the offense, have his targets go up, and obviously he's just a, a physical freak. So I, I think uh, this brings a little bit of it, – it's sad, obviously, that Juju's gone, but it brings clarity to offenses when there are fewer guys – that are going to dominate the market share. And Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson are both going to be great. Cortland Sutton bounced back, had himself a game, 11 targets, 7 for 120, and a score. Fireball Jones, a.k.a. Tim Patrick, he had himself an okay game as well. Uh, it kind of seemed like it came at the expense of Noah Fant, uh, unfortunately. But Sutton, I mean, everything is there. The air yards are there. Teddy Bridgewater is a fine quarterback. He's a competent quarterback. Sutton, he's a flex play to me because he will be – he's inconsistent on a on a Denver Broncos team that they, I don't, they I don't would prefer to run. You don't? I don't think he's inconsistent. Okay. If you, I mean, put it this way. You say, oh, well, he was the wide receiver six in week two, then he was 62, 65, and now 10. And you go, well, that's, that's very inconsistent. But you have to remember, it, three weeks ago – when they played the Jets, they were up on the Jets in two seconds and didn't need to okay, throw the ball yeah, that's at fair. all. So the game was over. Cortland yep. Sutton didn't get to play. Mm -hmm. Then the next week, they had Drew Locke. So it's like, okay, Cor you go play with Drew Locke. That's some excellent context. So Teddy Bridgewater gets back. They have a regular game, and he's great again. Um, so I, I think Cortland Sutton... So are you not... Are you are you trading high or are you holding on to Sutton? I'm just holding on to Sutton. I'm not okay. going to trade for him because the, the question will come, what happens when Jared Judy gets back? Sure, um, and that's sooner than later. Yeah, but if for a couple more weeks, uh, assuming it's still a couple weeks before Judy comes back, I think Sutton is someone I – there's no way I'm not putting him in my lineup. Bobby Trees, Robert Woods. There he Final is. Final straw, and that turned – the final straw turned into 14 targets, 12 for 150. Good to have you back, Robert Woods. Manny Sanders keeps getting things done for the Buffalo Bills. I mean, when I'm, when you got to be a little frustrated that Diggs is not getting these touchdowns. But. Yeah. But when my wide receivers get three receptions, I like when they get two touchdowns. Yeah, I do as well. Hopkins, CeeDee Lamb both had solid games. At the tight end position, David Njoku? <laughs> oh, yes. In the, I mean, there was a bajillion points scored in this game of my the first versus love, the Chargers. David I, Njoku. I loved J David Njoku, man. Uh, this is a guy I want the Cardinals to go trade for. But, uh, yeah, seven for 149-1. He didn't do – he doesn't do much. But he is so fast and athletic that if you can get him open, mm -hmm. you won't catch him. And that's what happened a couple times. And there it was. Kyle Pitts, 10 targets, 9 for 119, got
got his first touchdown. It was over in London. Unfortunately, to Kyle Pitts now it goes right into the bye week. But this was incredible to see. Not only that uh, Calvin Ridley was out. So the, the number one option for the Atlanta Falcons gone. And so you automatically go, well, the, the volume's going to go to Kyle Pitts. Yeah, but can a rookie tight end, as the number one option for this team, can he carry the offense? And, and the Jets, at, at least the against Jets the New York said, Jets. They, they go, can. yeah, oh, yeah, he can. It was a it was a big yes, but this that was great to see for Kyle Pitts. This was Andy's start of the week, yeah. and he was Andy's start of the week, obviously, before, even before the Calvin Ridley news, before the Russell Gage news. Russell Gage was also out, if you uh, were unaware. So Kyle Pitts was very necessary, perfect, easy matchup. Personally, I would try to trade high on Kyle Pitts. And I know it's hard because you've been waiting, and then he showed it, but he's got a bye week coming up, so you're not going to use him now. And then by the time the bye week is over, Russell Gage and 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 uh, oh, get, I don't care about Russell Gage. Oh, sure, but uh, um, my point is he's there, and Calvin Ridley will be back. And what you've seen through the beginning of the season, um, which is uh, involvement, usage, talent, but not a great fantasy finish on a weekly basis, usually for uh, Pitts. I think that's going to be more the norm than the. You're the only guy in town against the Jets' performance this so last. So then, week. who are you going to go get? So because I would you, do one of two if things. If you trade Kyle Pitts, now you need a you need a starting tight end. I would do one of two things. I would trade Kyle Pitts plus someone to move up for one of the big dog tight ends. Okay. If you wanted to try to go get a Darren Waller or like people don't trade the best tight ends unless they think that they can get you know some get Pitts plus something they might be willing to do it. Alternatively. If you have problems at running back or wide receiver and you can turn Pitts into a uh, Dawson Knox or Dalton Schultz plus a good running back or wide receiver, I would personally be willing to do that. But obviously, I think most people who have Pitts, they believe in the talent, they believe in in him, they saw this performance, and I think they're all going to hold Pat. Funny enough, Darren Waller's stat line in the last month not unlike Kyle Pitts, five for sixty-five, five for fifty-four, so four, might, four for fifty in a score, four for forty-five. So you might be able to get him, and I don't oh, think I, it's close as to which one you would want, despite the fact that their their lines have been somewhat similar. Dawson Knox, Fort Knox, the keeper of the Knox Knox jokes. I don't know. We're, we'll figure that out. But he is the one who knocks. But, that's for sure. Yeah. What's important here? Three for one seventeen in a score. He is the tight end two on the season. The breakout is happening. Sure, you want more targets. I totally get that. But you're playing with Josh Allen, who th th his his arm strength still boggles my mind where he's in the rain last night mm -hmm. just flicking his arm. And this ball just is an absolute laser beam out there to everyone, to Manny, to Stephon Diggs, which – I don't, people didn't it, they didn't talk about it on the broadcast but the Stefan Diggs deep catch certainly to me could be wrong to me looked like Stefan Diggs was a was looking around so he could showboat on his giant touchdown yeah. not realizing the defender was on the other side and then he got taken he thought, down he thought he was all alone that's what it looked like um it it was very Deshaun Jacksonian yeah him and his brother man they're, oh, doing, yes. they're doing work. Yes, they um, are fantastic. The, the, uh, Dawson Knox has not been outside the top 12 at tight end since week one. Yes. He's the only tight end that you could say that about. Hunter Henry had a, a great game. Now, same snaps as Jonu Smith, but he ran 20 routes to Jonu six. This is – I don't. we'll see if this is sticky or not for Hunter. And then Travis Kelsey was great. All right, it was fun talking about the good stuff, but we also got to cover the other side of the equation. Pooped in his big boy pants. Kyler Murray had a fine football game, did not have a good fantasy game. That's back-to-back -back weeks now, right, for Kyler with the, the low was, touchdown output? No, he was uh, number nine okay. uh, last week, so... Um, it, certainly, when you go from the quarterback one week one, the quarterback one in week two, you, you're disappointed with sure. anything uh, mediocre. But this week was was bad, and the reason that it was bad, one rushing yard. 
one rushing yard. This is a player who over the first couple weeks, uh, you know, the first month of the season was averaging basically almost 30 rushing yards and, you know, a half a touchdown a game. Um, seven carries for one yard was his rushing line. Sam Darnold was not just disappointing for fantasy. He was disappointing for uh, the NFL. He he crapped the bed in this one. He he single-handedly cost Carolina the game. What? He threw three touchdowns. Oh, I'm sorry. Those are interceptions. Yeah, and, and, and you know, wash, rinse, repeat. Missed DJ Moore again on another what would have been an easy touchdown. Derek Carr. Uh, after the shellacking of last week and then getting real mad online talking about how dare Joey Bosa say those things about me that I just curl into a ball when I get pressure. That makes me mad. I'll show you what I can do. And the answer to that was uh, get shellacked by the Chicago Bears. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who are the Raiders? I don't know. But at least with them, we knew that. And okay, we've known we, that forever, and we'll know that forever. If you didn't know, now you know. Right. Uh, at the running back position, Chase Edmonds, real fart of a game. He was a he was injured uh, during the week and was kind of a game time decision. So this, not while not surprising, it still sucks because he was active. I played him in, in my teams where I have him. He did not come through. Melvin Gordon had a poor game. It's still a fifty fifty split with Javante Williams. How, to me, Javante is the better runner, but we'll see if uh, by the second half Javante really breaks out. Mild Sanders <laughs> continues to not see a lot of opportunity, and Kenneth Gamble did not come through either. And this week they play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which means Bail out. You, you can't run on them. Bail um, out. Elijah Mitchell against the Arizona Cardinals. The missile was back. Nine for 43. That's a good yard per carry. Uh, only two targets for 19 yards or two catches of 19 yards. It didn't turn into a big fantasy game, but I think you should feel confident starting Elijah moving forward. I uh, Yes, Elijah moving forward is the start. It was clear as day watching this game. That it's like, oh, Trey Lance, or I'm sorry, uh, Trey Sermon. Trey Sermon only had one carry, and it was like later in the game. Exactly. He was an afterthought to this team. Um, the issue here is that you, you look at, uh, you know, Elijah being the clear cut running back one had nine carries, whereas Trey Lance had 16 rushing attempts. Um, so is there worry now with Trey Lance being there that you're not going to be, you're not going to have enough rushing volume, well, enough handoffs to the running back? Well, that's, that's an interesting point. Trey Lance was kind of in this, he wasn't a stud. He wasn't a dud. Uh, I mean, for someone who did not score a touchdown, he had a lot of fantasy points, but we're kind of in this fantasy purgatory with him. And Shanahan has said, Garoppolo is our guy. Once once he's healthy, we're going to go back to Jimmy Garoppolo. So, I mean, whatever. Let's just have this discussion now. Trey Lance, he's in the bye week. Shanahan has at least come out and said that Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be the guy. Garoppolo did some uh, on-field workout, doing mm -hmm. the stuff with the uh, the exercise band. Could they were hoping he would be good to go? We knew he wouldn't start this week, but with the bye week, he 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 reasonably could be healthy and starting again. Are you buying into what Shanahan is saying that it is him? And then what do you or what do you do with Trey Lance at this point? You drop Trey Lance okay. and you drop Trey Sermon. There, if there was a third Trey, it would be really nice, but there's only two of them. <laughs> um, but those two guys to me are 100 percent drops. I'm not holding them through a bye. And then coming out of the bye two weeks from now when I'm very confident I can't play either one. So I know I can't play them for a fact this week. And then two weeks from now, I can't play them because the other two actual starters are going to be ahead. Um, you don't need to hold on to players like that, especially obviously bye weeks are here. So they're not the only guys with bye. You might have to you might need a roster position. I'm moving on from from both of those players at the wide receiver position. DJ Moore. Uh, five for forty-two. This it was much uglier. Uh, towards the end of the game, I don't even, <laughs> I don't, I don't know when he jumped up to five receptions, but so, it, but not what you were hoping for with more. Stephon Diggs, two for sixty-nine. 
Really think he could have had the touchdown, but he did not. That was pretty nice. I could, maybe I read the situation wrong. I don't know. But it really looked like that. A.J. Brown, three for 38 on his return. Terry McLaurin, he saw 11 targets, but only four for 46. Taylor Heineke and they were bad was, targets. Taylor Heineke was was bad. Yeah, he was. Uh, he was bad, bad this week. He's had. It's so funny because he's had games where his accuracy is why he's on the field, like pinpoint, just in stride hitting. And this game, you could see the receivers just throwing their hands up, like, dude, get, like they were open, and he just kept overthrowing them or underthrowing them, or it just he had a bad game. And I think that's you got to just chalk it up as a bad game next week against Kansas City, who. I think they after the Super Bowl they got rid of their defense. Is that what they did? <laughs> they just said Maybe. we need to invest in the offensive line. We're going to let our defense go. Uh, so I, uh, it's a get right game. I'm not worried about Terry McLaurin at all. Adam Thielen, three targets, two for forty. The receptions have dropped every single week. Uh, every single week since week one, where he had he was the wide receiver for the monster performance. Ten targets, then seven, nine, eight, three. And the last three weeks, the Minnesota Vikings have scored 17 or fewer points. So that's three straight weeks. That's not good offensive output. Are you concerned about Adam Thielen, or is this just a slump and he's going to bounce back? Uh, I'm concerned about the short-term outlook because the Carolina defense, while Carolina and Sam Darnold looked horrific on offense, their defense is absolutely they weren't legit. Like Chuba had a fine game. Yeah, sure, all the dump-offs. He, he had the Christian McCaffrey workload, which was yep. nice. Um, but their defense is absolutely legit. And with what we've seen over the last couple of weeks from the Minnesota puttering offense, um, they've got Carolina in Carolina this coming week, followed by a bye week. So I think it's going to be rough sledding for a couple of weeks if you could – move Adam Thielen I would be willing to do that just to manufacture wins but I do think Adam Thielen's going to be fine rest of season I'm not concerned with um you know his two for 40 game that that's the new normal Brandon Cooks it was uh, you could have seen it coming against the Patriots but when Davis Mills <laughs> goes nuclear you would have expected that Brandon Cooks got involved however he didn't but the Indianapolis Colts, the Arizona Cardinals up next for Brandon Cooks. I think better games are ahead. Odell Beckham, three targets, two for 20, a terrible drop on fourth and two. I mean, Beckham gets to Arizona next week. I – No, thank you. He, yeah. No, right. he's – he's. Uh, are you, is, is Beckham a drop for you or is he just going onto no, your bench? No, you trade Beckham. Okay. He's got too big a name to drop. He's absolutely drop a bowl in the sense, look, the Browns just scored 42 points. Jarvis Landry, not on the roster. Right. Odell Beckham had 20 yards. Um, you don't want to play with that, but you can always, I mean, you know, getting a Michael Pittman or someone like that, tr trying to trying to trade for a young stud that's up and coming. Maybe the Jerry Judy manager is needing someone now. I would trade sure. Odell Beckham for some up and coming young guy. Rather, I mean, and if I can't, if I absolutely can't, and there's a good, you know, I've got the chance to to pick up Devonte Booker. Sure, I would be willing to, but I his name is big enough where you you got to cash in on that value. T Higgins and Tyler Boyd. Uh, of the Cincinnati Bengals, while Jamar Chase was the man, Higgins and Boyd did not come through with a game. Higgins got injured as well during that game okay. again. Um, you saw him kind of writhing in pain. I don't know if it was um, a re-aggravation of the shoulder. Okay, it seemed like it would have been. We'll we'll have to stay tuned for news on that. Marvin Jones and Lavisca Chenault they had terrible games because when you have a chance. To target Tavon Austin and Jamal Agnew. Oh, you got to take. You got to take that chance. You cannot throw that away. No, those guys are superstars, and it really helped them lose this game. <laughs> like, if Urban Meyer had any chance to, like, build some uh, some status or some trust up with the fantasy football community, he sure threw that in the dumpster. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking through the schedule. And I'm trying to find some W's. 
They're playing Miami. My, they could beat Miami. They could. Uh, the we'll Jets see. in week 16. Okay. Goodness gracious. Back-to-back -back number one picks. Uh, speaking of the Jets, they – Corey Davis, uh, Jamison Crowder, it was bad news. The, 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 the hopefulness we had for the Jets that they showed against the Titans, that was swiftly removed by the Atlanta Falcons. Allen Robinson, five targets, four for 32. What are we doing with Allen Robinson? Well, we had a couple final straw players we brought up on the Spotify Green Room show on Wednesdays. Robert Woods, Robbie Anderson, Allen Robinson, all the Robs. And one-third uh, passed yeah. the test. Yeah, Robert Woods. Good job. And two-thirds, Allen Robinson and Robbie Anderson, did they failed. Um, I don't know. So Robbie Anderson's easy. Robbie Anderson's cut. You're okay. not going to get anything. You're not going to be able to trade him away like Odell Beckham. Um, he had seven targets, but Christian McCaffrey is going to come back, um, and he was missed on on you know a, a couple bombs. Blah 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 blah. blah, blah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> he sucked, so cut him. Um, oh, man. So Allen Robinson is the biggest question. Like Allen Robinson is an impossible situation. If Mike Williams is the best draft pick in fantasy this year. I think Allen Robinson might be the worst draft pick in fantasy because of how high you invested in such a safe, secure asset who is now a and, and torturous. You keep playing him. Exactly. He's a torturous situation because this is someone that you you can't possibly cut. You can't cut him, right? I mean I it <laughs> You can't play him. I so, I trade uh, Allen Robinson on much my highly publicized, much maligned League of Record team, which is just in shambles. Allen Robinson was the biggest piece of the of my destruction, and I traded him away. And I was I I traded him in my division uh, to one of my rivals, and I was willing to do that because I thought I I think I'm trading a landmine yeah. to my opponent who put him right in the starting lineup and Allen Robinson was terrible. So I I don't blame you if you want to hold on to Allen Robinson on the bench and see if things can get turned around. I guess maybe the same prescription as Odell. Yeah. Maybe you try to trade him for a Jerry Judy, a Cortland Sutton, uh, uh, Michael Pittman. Sure. TJ Hawkinson, Jason, what do we do here? Oh, my God. Goodness. What do we do here? Three targets. Where's the panic button? All right, we, I, I want producers it. Producers, hit it for yeah, me. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> what is happening? The first two weeks of the season were a guarantee. It was locked. You had, I you you sold me the Brooklyn Bridge, Jason. I, and I, I loved the money <laughs> that I received for the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> Ten targets, eight receptions. <laughs> Nine targets, eight receptions. The centerpiece. But the defense is queuing in on me. The I can't, centerpiece can't of this offense was TJ Hawkinson. So here's what we do know. We know it can happen. We know that this team can feature TJ Hawkinson. The last few weeks have been a grand total of 10 yards, 42 yards, 22 yards. So we also know that this can happen. Right. Um, it is definitely scary um, because now the majority of his games are bad. We've we've shifted from him being a locked-in uh, great play to uh, he's had more bad games than good ones. And what do you do um, if I have TJ Hawkinson? I continue to play him. Okay. If I don't have a tight end, if I am someone that was, you know, out there in the Jared Cook sphere, um, living with the same kind of boom bust, I'm trying to trade for him still. Um, he he had the knee concern that kept him out of practice um, this last week, so he was not as um, involved. Played the lowest snaps of the season, still eighty percent of the snaps, but that was. Low for him. Um, I, I oh, think, that's right, because he had a chance to play. Right. Yeah. So I, I think brighter days are ahead of him, but he is not a guarantee the way that it appeared after two weeks of the season. Darren Waller didn't give you what you had hoped for. Noah Fant, this one was extremely disappointing. Three for 20. 
Uh, the guys up in Philadelphia, they Dallas Goddard and Zach Ertz, they continue to cannibalize each other's production. There's nothing there. And then, I mean, that's that's really it of the note for, for the tight ends. <sighs> Monday night, Jason. Monday night. Here's what I need, okay? Yeah. Play with me, Foot Clan. I need either a great game from Hollywood Brown or a horrific game from Hollywood Brown, okay? I need him to score Wait, fewer what? than five fantasy oh, points <laughs> to win. Like, that's most important is fewer than five. <laughs> or he needs to explode and have like a 20-point week. Okay, so if, you, so, so if he just goes out and goes, you know, six for 60, I lose both. <laughs> I'm just, don't, oh, no. no mediocrity, Hollywood. Give me a, an absolute collapse or a wonderful performance. That is the worst place to be. Yeah. You know, oh, I already know what's happening. I mean, he's going to be right down the middle road and uh, pour all the salt in my wounds. We want to say a special shout out to Pristine Auction for sponsoring this show. PristineAuction.com, the best memorabilia site of all time. Currently, a Jalen Hurts signed jersey. It's up there right now for just 50 bones. That auction ends on Tuesday night. And a signed DK Metcalf jersey mm. at this time, just $63. That auction also ends on Tuesday night. PristineAuction.com. Use our registration code BALLERS to get $10 in credit for your first auction victory. I wonder if they have any Russell Wilson signed memorabilia. I feel like that's got to go up in value. He can't be signing a bunch of stuff. Oh, I didn't know where you were going. It was it just uh, poking fun in his finger. Sorry, in division. In division, it's allowed. I, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Take that, Judah. That's going to do it. Oh, Mad Dog getting called out on the show. That's going to do it for today's show. We will see you tomorrow with the waivers. Very important waiver show this week, Foot Clan. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.